Jackie Rosen, welcome to 13 Action News. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So I want to say that I invited both you and your opponent to come and sit down for 15 minutes or so. Danny Tarkanian, and your opponent, the Republican running, initially agreed. His campaign uh, then suddenly disappeared. And I gather there's not going to be any debates, which is unfortunate. Uh, I wanted to get that out of the way before asking you about Danny Tarkanian. You have put out a lot of news releases lately about Danny Tarkanian. I was looking through it and it mentioned another guy with the same initials on almost every release, Danny Tarkanian and Donald Trump. Why do you think that's so relevant? Well, I think Danny Tarkanian is so extreme, a Tea Party radical. He stands on his own in this district. As you know, he's a professional candidate. He's run four times, quit once, and his views are very extreme. And I feel very strongly that this time he's been aligning himself with Donald Trump, and especially with what's gone on with the uh, the the tape, the leaked tape from um, uh, what was it, Access Hollywood, where Danny Tarkanian still stands with Donald Trump. I really do believe where's his moral compass. He's been a professional candidate, and getting the Trump vote is more important to him uh, than it is for him to stand up against that kind of reprehensible behavior. What do you think he should have done? You think he should have just disavowed him at that point and said, I'm not going to support you anymore. You should step down, which is what Joe Heck did. You think that's what he should have done? Well, I think he could have been a little bit more honest with the voters and his cons uh, constituents here in our district as to what he really felt about uh, about the comments when we uh, talk about gold star families, we talk about building walls and not bridges, we talk about stopping immigration from the Philippines. Uh, the list goes on and on, and I think he needs to stand up for what he believes in and not necessarily uh, tie himself to that. Uh, because this, that's what the constituents here want to hear. You mentioned moral compass, and you had said before uh, that you think Danny Tarkanian has lost his moral compass, and yet Hillary Clinton, whom you were supporting, uh, is viewed as being dishonest. The latest polling numbers in Nevada show 55% or above. Mm -hmm. Do you think she's lost her moral compass? You know, I think the character is something that's built over a lifetime, and I think that her career in public service, fighting for children, uh, working as a senator, secretary of state, I believe that uh, she has the judgment to organize a team of individuals around her that she's going to listen to and try to keep us safe and secure and move our country forward, as opposed to the other side that uh, um, I think they're just going to be reckless, dangerous, and I, I honestly believe unfit, uh, along with many other Republicans, Republican leaders across the country, uh, leaders across the world, uh, military leaders have all denounced Donald Trump. You are on a ticket with Hillary Clinton. Uh, you, you know that. And, and so I guess her honesty should be important to you. Do you believe she's an honest person? There's a lot that's come out. A lot of Americans, including a lot of Democrats, you know this, don't yeah. think she's an honest person. You feel confident supporting her as an honest person or just because she's not Donald Trump? You know, if you're asking me about her emails, then she apologized for that. It was a mistake. She did the wrong thing. You think it was just a mistake, though, Jackie Rosen? If people don't remember. You have some experience in in the area right. of, of computers. Right. You right. know, you know about security. Uh, I, I think uh, that was very reckless. Uh, some people would say secretive, paranoid. Uh, why isn't that a huge character flaw that should bother you? Well, because I think that what you see, what she's done in her lifetime of service, is always assembled teams around her. Uh, tried to work across the aisle, tried to do the right thing. So I think that's what she's going to do when she goes to Washington. It's what I want to do when I go to Congress. You know, I travel around the district. Every day I talk to different groups of people. And what everyone is so upset about is that there haven't been conversations. They feel that so many on whatever side they're on have slammed the door. They're refusing to come to the table and talk. And people here are left behind. And whether it's large business, small business, community bank, credit union, the veterans, you know, we go everywhere. Everybody wants us to come back to the table and have conversations and try to find those areas of agreement where we can move forward. People are just uh, feeling like they're not listened to. So I want to take it back down to what I can do here at Congress because that's really important that I take these In other words, you don't forward. want to talk about Hillary Clinton's lack of trust in, among many voters? I think that she's going to have the judgment to keep our country safe, to keep our uh, men and women across the world safe, and to make sure that we pass comprehensive immigration reform, defend a woman's right to choose, uh, 
pass common sense gun safety laws, I believe that she's going to do that. I support those issues. You know, it's, it's interesting. In a way, you are uh, very much unlike Hillary Clinton, and you're what a lot of Americans are looking for, someone from the outside to come in and change, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, the dysfunction in Washington. I don't, I don't want to do a campaign mailer for you here. <laughs> but, but I guess what some people like about Donald Trump putting everything else aside, whether or not you think you can put everything else aside, is that he's a newcomer. He says, Washington's broken. I need, we need someone from the outside. You've been successful in your career. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you look at things through an outsider's right. perspective. Uh, what makes you think you can go to Washington, considering the toxicity that's going to exist, no matter who wins? I think we can both agree uh, on that. What is it that you can bring? Well, first of all, one of the main reasons I got into the race is because I know that I can make the most difference right here in the district. So one of the first things I'm going to do when I get elected is be sure that I have the best office, I have an open door, I'm going to listen to everybody and take all those voices Everyone to says that, though. You know that's not new. Everyone says they're going to listen to everybody. Well, what, are you going to give me a list of people you're not going to listen to? You well, know that doesn't I, I, say I, anything. No, but I believe that there have been representatives here who don't listen to people that they don't agree with. If you have a good idea, I'm going to listen. You know, as a computer programmer, and you know this, you have to build consensus. So you have to listen to all sides in order to make things work. So that's a skill I hope to bring to Washington. I'm very persistent. So uh, maybe we need to stage some sit-ins on the doors that won't open for us. And uh, be persistent. Keep banging down those doors. Keep bringing those conversations. And try to, if you can't begin with the conversation, you can't move anything forward. And that's what I want to try to do. I'm going to be persistent, and I'm going to uh, uh, keep knocking on doors till they till I till they let me in. I am uh, privileged to live in Congressional District 3, and when I got back from the special session up in Carson City, I had the usual avalanche of mail pieces in there. And one of them is from Danny Tarkanian, your, your, your opponent, who seems to think you're distorting his position on an issue I think is very important to mm -hmm. Americans, and that's Social Security privatization. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen things where you've said he's not only does he support it, but he recently doubled down uh, mm -hmm. uh, on it. Uh, but he has never said specifically that's his number one choice. He says it should be on the table. That's not necessarily being for Social Security privatization. Well, I think he was on conservative talk radio just a few days ago where he uh, thought we should raise the retirement age a few years. Is that a bad idea, raising the retirement age? Well, I think that it is not a good idea. You know, I took care, as you know, I've been on here before. It's my third time with you, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I took care of my parents and in-laws, so I've been to a lot of assisted living rehab centers. I think raising the retirement age is a bad idea, cutting benefits a bad idea. He does want. He does support clearly privatizing Social Security. You think it's clear he supports it as opposed to just keeping it as an option? I mean, there are some people who think, Jackie Rosen, that at some point you're going to have to do something to quote-unquote fix Social Security. Maybe you don't have to do it the day that you're elected, but at right. some point in right. the future. So whether you just think that should be off the table. Uh, he thinks it should yeah. be on the table. Yeah, that that may be a difference. Yeah. What is on the table for you? Well, what's on the table is creating jobs because it all starts with a workforce in our economy. If we pass bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform, we bring people out of the underground economy, let them go to work right here in our communities, become business owners, homeowners, that's going to contribute to Social Security. That's how it was set up, to have current workers subsidizing the workers that were retired. Economy, jobs, that's one of the best ways we can do to fix it. Some of the other things, I don't mean to keep going back to being an analyst, is looking at some of the uh, fraud, waste, or abuse that we might have, streamlining systems that may be out of date, we can find... Um, fraud, waste, and abuse, that's like something that everyone who runs for Congress is given like at the beginning of their run. Talk about fraud, waste, no, and no, abuse. You know, but you don't think that's going to save enough money to really make a difference, I think do it you? All, I think that it all goes together in a package. So I guess I look at it from a systems perspective. So when you look at uh, how how things are input into the system, how we're processing payments, how we're doing those things, I believe that we can make them more efficient. We can find savings and efficiency and economy of scale. So maybe that, uh, uh, that term that everyone uses, I look at it in a different way because I think of the systems that we use to process, to interview people, to take their applications, and I think that there's ways to streamline those, make them better, make them more efficient, and we can find a lot of savings there too. Well, let's take a few minutes uh, as we wrap this up to talk about something that the Republicans are giving you a hard time about, mm -hmm. and that's Obamacare. Because you said to somebody, I forget who it was, that it was a fabulous first step 
Uh, and and uh, uh, do you still believe that? Because there are a lot of people who are worried in 2017. There's a lot of talk. Some of the major insurers, as you know, are going to raise mm -hmm. premiums. Do you really think still you're going to stick by that? The adjective fabulous? Well, I'm going to say it's an important first step. You're not, not so fabulous anymore? Not so fabulous. No. Well, I don't want to say not so fabulous. I want to say it's an important first step because Why? we can't go back to a time where we discriminated against women, where we denied you coverage based on a pre existing condition, where we dropped you if, God forbid, you got sick, someone in your family got sick, and we removed the lifetime caps for people who have chronic illnesses like multiple sclerosis, different things like that. So those are terrific things. You know, I have a friend who's an independent contractor, and uh, because she got health care through the exchange, she had a preventative screening mammogram. They found out she had breast cancer. She had surgery, radiation, chemotherapy. She's with us today. She probably wouldn't be here if she didn't have that. So those well, that, that's true, but you can't do policy by anecdote either, right? You, no, you, you but those are that. the success stories. So what we but need to do... But there's a lot do, of people who have had premiums go up. Right. Sure, a lot more people have gotten covered, but there's a lot of people who have had premiums go up. There's a lot of people who are going to have their premiums go up even more next year. So what we need to do, what I really feel is we need to build on our successes and we need to take a look at what's not working. I talk to a lot of people. I have private health insurance. I understand what they're talking about. I think we need to uh, look at ways that we can, again, streamline the systems, look at ways that we can uh, negotiate the best drug costs, uh, negotiate the best insurance costs, repeal probably the medical device tax. There's a health benefits tax. There's a lot of things that we need to work on. But Danny Tarkanian, Republicans, they just want to repeal, repeal, repeal with nothing to replace it. I don't want to go back. I want to build on the success, fix what's broken, and move forward in that way. I think that's the best path for America. Do you think that there were mistakes made in the passage of it? In other words, parts that were put in there that should be repealed, if not necessarily taking uh, Obamacare off the table completely? I think we can look at the medical device tax. But besides that? The health benefits tax, I absolutely think that's The excise one. tax, you mean? Or, or something else? No, the excise tax. If you have a better health plan than they think you should have that uh, uh, oftentimes companies, different people negotiate for in their contracts. Right. I think that uh, we can roll that back and uh, cut that tax. I think those are two things that we can work on. All right, Jackie Rosen, I really appreciate your willingness to come uh, in and, and talk to me on uh, 13 Action News. Good luck to you on November 8th. Thanks Thank for you. coming Thank in. Thank you. I appreciate All right. it. Thank you.